My younger sister would have been 27 today. This is July 9th, 2023. And I knew this day was coming and I just don't know how I was going to take it because... If you watch the other videos on the channel, you probably see you know the very upbeat edited. It's not even that edited, but there's a lot of um, energy that goes into making my videos, and it's mostly because I usually think of the person watching at the back of my mind, and I have a goal to share something that I think is insightful or that is helpful to somebody. And so, my goal when I'm editing or making a video usually is I want the person who's watching this to get something out of it. And I think a lot of content creators think like that. There's always this transactional nature of, I need somebody to get something out of this. So what you're listening to or watching right now, <laughs> the reason why it's not edited at all is because I don't know what you're going to get out of this. I don't know if you're going to leave out of this conversation feeling like you have a better understanding of death, if you have a better understanding of how to prepare for it, or if 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 you've already lost someone, if it's going to give you a level, a level of reprieve, because honestly, I just felt that I had to make this for myself and for the people who tend to think a lot about these things. My younger sister, right here, Mishu, would have been 27. Today, she would have been celebrating, probably gone to the club or something. She was a very exuberant person in the way that she lived her life. <clears throat> and I think the world saw her as one thing, as somebody who went for her goals, went for her dreams, went for all these things. Somebody who was stubborn, somebody who refused to listen to what anybody told her she couldn't do. She got her first job when she finished college and she switched jobs and she already had dreams of her business. She even started her business while she was in college. And so a lot of people know her as someone who was very entrepreneurial and very driven. What a lot of people don't know about my sister, and I think about all of us as siblings, is that she had to struggle to fight for her independence, her individuality. She had to overcome a lot of challenges. She had to overcome a lot of difficulties as a child, a lot of mindset changes. And to be completely honest, I don't think she eventually actually overcame all of them. I think she, she did her best. She really did. And so when I think of her today, I'm looking at somebody who even though life threw her curveballs after curveball, even when she got diagnosed with breast cancer, she still chose to live the way that she had chosen to live on her terms. And I think that's very admirable. Is that even a word? Admirable? Yeah, I hope it is. If it's not, then let's make it a word. So, this morning I woke up. Knowing that July 9th is the day that Michelle was going to be 27. And I'm like, what am I supposed to feel today? Intellectually and in the spirit, I'm aware that Michelle is in heaven. The flesh is just this container that we have that contains our spirit and our soul. And she's fine. Like, intellectually, spiritually speaking, she's fine. And so when I was washing my face and listening to, there's this, this, it's not really a song, it's like a speech uh, titled Even in Death by Akira the Dawn with Joko Willing's words where he's basically talking about death and even in death there is good. Like that's like the, the returning phrase, even in death there is good. And the idea of the whole song really is that even in the worst case scenarios, of death, of somebody that I care about leaving, there is something good you can find. And Joko is making this argument that you have these person's memories, you got to experience them, you got to 
to be with them. You got to laugh with them. You got to hang out with them. And so listen to that. This party says death is cruel and it seems to take only the best of us. I'm like, man. <laughs> it's like I was trying to reason my way through this thing and trying to self-improvement my way through my sister's death. And I just broke down. Like a tab was flowing. The thing was playing on the speaker. I turned on the ventilator, so it was just me in this bubble. Going at it. And I thought at that point, like, man, no matter, I don't think this thing's ever going to go away. I, I don't think this feeling of, man, I wish my sister was here. It's ever going to go away. And the way my brain is wired is that I don't even, like, <laughs> I can't even feel bad for too long without thinking of how someone else in this position is going to feel. It's like this unfortunate brain switch where when something bad happens to me i want to i want to learn quickly from it so that i can help somebody else to not deal with it it's been very helpful it's gotten better over the years it's not it was i wasn't always like this but when i think of my sister and i think of the life that she lived and the fact that she died when she was so young the only thing that comes to my mind is man i i wish we could actually realize how fickle life is and how grateful we must be for every single day that we see and to Joko's point is the life that I'm living right now, the ambition that I have, the dreams that I have, my goals to live well are very strongly tied to the fact that my sister will not be able to live in this plane of existence. A couple of weeks ago, I was watching, I was going through her TikTok and there's a video that she was making of my younger sister. This sister, sister tag, like who is the, who eats the most, who is the cleanest, who is the most organized, things like that. And there was one video, one question that asked, who is going to get married first? And then they both pointed at my late sister. Who's going to have kids first? They both pointed at my late sister. I've shared this story with a friend privately. Actually, a couple of friends privately. But I keep going back to this because it's like, we get up each day, we go to work, we talk to our neighbors, we, I don't know, mow our lawns, wash our floors, go to the market, cook food. We assume that tomorrow is going to, tomorrow is guaranteed. Like, yeah, of course, if I go to bed today, I'll wake up tomorrow. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if, I, if I tell this person, if I'm angry at this person and I scream at them, I will have the chance to ask for forgiveness. If I'm upset, I can stay upset because at some point I'm going to be happy. If I'm broke, I can make money because at some point I'm going to have money. Like, <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's not funny. It's, um, when I think of my sister in this video and how they were so certain that she was going to be this person and be married and have kids. And now she's dead. She's never going to get married. She's never going to have kids. She's never going to play with my kids. She's never going to travel out of Cameroon. She's never going to see, I don't know, Paris. She's never going to eat Vietnamese food. She's never going to own a successful business. She's never going to see her grandchildren. She's never going to give me nephews and nieces. She's never going to attend my wedding. I will never hug her again. Etc. Etc. She would have been 27 today. Three years to 30. She might have started seriously considering getting married. In fact, she might have been married today. She might have been pregnant. She might have been thinking that, okay, maybe it's time for her to leave the country and go somewhere else and start from there. She might have been happy for me that after what I went through in this country, I've been able to steal my feet. I know she would have called and I would have called her. I would have sent her money to just go and have fun because that's the least you can do in, in, in America. Just send money, right? You call, 
you talk with them and they send money. Like, what else can you do? You can't give them a hug. You can't go there and say anything. None of that is ever going to happen again. That's a fact. Life is such a gift that we waste thinking that we are smarter than the creator, thinking that we are immortal, thinking that we know what's best for us, thinking that we understand how our bodies work, that we understand time. Life is such a gift, a miracle, that every single day that we see, we seem to forget that some people do not see it. Life is such a wonderful experience that every single piece of it, from the breath that we take to the grass that we see on the road, every single person we meet, a unique creature created by God, every single piece of nature made by his own hand, every blade of grass, every petal of a flower, every single song you've ever heard or you'll ever hear, all made wonderfully by God. And through him we get to exist in this plane and get to experience it. Through him we get to glorify his name with the gifts and talents that he's given us all unique because our DNA is unique. There's no person who will be like you. There's no person who can ever love the things that you love. There's no person who can ever experience life the way you experience it. No one will ever understand your perspective. No one will ever know your story. No one will ever see the world the way you do. You are unique. My sister was unique. Irreplaceable. There is no person on earth who could ever replace the space my sister has left in our hearts. And that is a fact. She was diagnosed in July. By September, she was gone. And I was angry. I still remember how angry I was. I wish I could have done more. I wish my parents could have done more. I wish things could have been different. But those are just wishes. The reality is that she's dead. The reality is that I will die. And you will die. And the only thing I can think of that you can take away from this conversation today is that love your loved ones. Like, <laughs> love them. Like, really, love them. Don't tolerate. Don't accommodate. Don't pacify or compromise. Love them. If you care about somebody, care about them. If you appreciate somebody, appreciate them. Don't just think about the appreciation or the love or the ideas or the feeling that maybe one day you're going to buy this house for your parents or I'm going to return the money that you've borrowed me, dear big brother, or I'm going to have money one day and I'll send money to you since you've been giving me money all your life. Love them now. Love them now. Because there will come a time when you wouldn't be able to. Live now. Because there will come a time that you'll not be able to live. Tell them every day that you love them. Show them every day that you love them. Forget their trespasses as quickly as possible and just love them. Live your life fully. Not because you live only once and you should engage in all kinds of terrible activities that are destructive, but because the experience of life is unique to you and your perspective. The way you live, no other person can live the way you live. The way you see things, your perspective, your sense of humor, your sense of style,
When I say you should be yourself, it doesn't mean you should forget about people's feelings. It's look inside your heart and find what God has given you and bring that out in whatever way it is. Whether it's through art or music or your work or in being a parent or in serving in church or in just being a great neighbor. There are 7 billion, 8 billion of us and there are 8 billion different ways we can be loving and we can serve and we can care. And I think we are so stuck in our petty understanding of mankind and this weird, stupid idea that we have to be right. Oh, that my parents were wrong. They should have treated me better. I went through trauma, so I can't change. The world is a terrible place. Rich people are evil. Elon Musk did this and Mark Zuckerberg did that. And I got a divorce, so marriage sucks. Or my sister died, so life is worthless. No. <laughs> every loss makes every gain even more. Losing my sister has made me a lot more passionate. Getting a divorce has made me a lot more li- loving. Every time that I've fallen sick, I have become so grateful for my health. And so when I think of my sister and I feel sad and I cry on my own, it's not because I want the world to end. It's not because I wish she didn't die. I do. It's because I know how painful it is to not be able to do the things you want has a chance to do. I know how painful it is that I can't pick up my phone and send her money for no reason. I know what it's like. To imagine a life where she's there and she's smiling and laughing and then just get up and the reality is that she's no longer there. And it's one of those things that we all have to go through at some point. And the way I see it's been experienced around me is like people who don't think about death and really introspect and really consider things just carry on like nothing has happened. Like Another thing, I don't know if they're carrying on. I, I, I don't think they are carrying on. I think we just refuse to face the, the, the death that is inevitable. We refuse to look at it and be like, man, one day I will die. Would I be okay with the way that I lived? Would I be okay with the way that I left, the ones that I love? <sighs> what can I do to change that today? What can I do that when my parents eventually die i can say you know what i told them everything that i could tell them i did everything that i could do to make them be loved i appreciated them and i have no regrets whatsoever (laughs) what can we do what can i do that when i turn and look at my future spouse i look at my kids i look at my friends i can say i was there for you when you needed me and i have no regrets And I think without living intentionally like that, we will just coast and die and be forgotten. And that's not life. That's a waste of breath. It's a waste of God's miracle. It's a waste of existence. If you cannot live fully, then why are you here? And I have to clarify, living fully doesn't mean reckless. It just means that everything you do, you choose to do it and you're fully present. Everything you do, you choose to be completely available to the people who are around you. Your presence is felt. Your heart is honest. I choose to live that way. Because my sister, after everything she went through, chose to live that way. And I will talk about her to the day I die. Because her memory will continue to live on. As a reminder... That she loved me and I love her. As a reminder that if I don't love the people who I can love today, one day I will wish they were here for me to love them. So I should be more intentional in my relationships, in my work, in my health, in everything. My relationship with God. And if anything, I know that the only reason why I was able to cope my sister's loss and the only reason why I keep going today and I keep trying and I keep 
working on, everything that I'm working on is because God is giving me the strength that my flesh will not give me. Because when I broke down and I cried, it wasn't because I did not believe that she's in heaven. It wasn't because I did not believe that God exists and that heaven exists. It was because my body, my flesh, my human misses my sister. And I can acknowledge that with the same understanding that she is where there is no pain, there is no sadness, there is no job, nine to five, overtime, PTO, acne, menstrual pain, all of that, she no longer has to deal with it. But knowing that she no longer has to deal with that does not stop me from missing my sister. And so like Joko said in the video, we would remember, but we would not dwell. There is a difference. I can feel the pain of a loss. I can feel how much I miss her. But it doesn't stop me from being grateful that I got to spend time with her. I got to know her. I got to experience her intelligence, her wisdom, her beauty, her sense of humor, her sense of style, her teaching, her cooking. And that's how I'm going to remember her. She would have been 27 today. And every day I will remember her. And every birthday I will share about her. <laughs> and I will call my siblings and we'll talk about her. And I will cheer up those that I can cheer up after I'm done cheering myself up. And I will let myself be cheered up by those who care about me. Because that's life. You can't live life alone. You can't be so strong that you need nobody. And you can't be so weak that you can't help anybody. We are all here for each other. We are all here to be representatives of God's love. Love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your strength, and with all your love God with all your heart, with all your might, and with all your strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you love yourself, you will take care of yourself. And if you love your neighbor, you will take care of your neighbor. So, thank you for listening to me. I hope you took something out of it. I'll see you next time.